So let's try to do that. Yeah, of course, this will keep happening. So once you try to add the student to the course, you will have an exception. So the exception is saying system.null reference exception. And the message always will be object reference not set to an instance of object. Okay, what does that mean? Like first, it will take you to the line where the exact error happened. Okay, it will take you right away. So where is the problem? It's telling you like when you tried to add the course, like it was able to check if you have max credits, it was, it was able to check everything. And uh, it saw that you can join the course. So it was trying to add you to the course and add the course to your list of courses. Okay, but look at list of courses. What is the value of the list of courses? It is null. Okay, can you see the null? Okay, why? Because I created the list of courses here, but I didn't create or I didn't write a new. Okay, do you remember when we said first part of the object is just a pointer? And if you want to point to something like an actual thing, you need the new keyword. So here I didn't say new anything. I just said, okay, there is a list, but I didn't say it's a new list of something. I didn't create the actual list. So what, what is this pointer pointing to now? Like, like do you remember this is a pointer, right? it needs to point to an actual list. So what is the thing this pointer is pointing to? Null. Yeah, so it's it's pointing to null, right? And you can see it, like it will tell you like, this is okay, this is a pointer that needs to point to a list, but so far it's pointing to null, okay? So you have null, you have nothing, and you are trying to add a course to a list of nothing, which is an exception, okay? Like this is the most common exception because um, like every time you are dealing with any object that is null, you are trying to access anything in this object, which is null, okay? You will have the null reference exception. Okay, that this reference, this pointer is pointing to nothing. So how can I add anything to this list? This list doesn't exist. Okay, and that's what it was complaining about. So what we usually do, like inside the constructor itself, okay, inside the constructor, we like uh, initialize, what did we call it? list of courses equals new list of courses okay inside each constructor or you can initialize it above here or you can say that here okay. but you will notice when we work with generated code that they prefer to initialize it inside the constructor so when you construct a student, the list of courses or any list will be created, will be initialized. So you won't have this null reference exception. Okay, so you do you do it either here or either uh, in the constructors. Okay, but for now let's keep doing it here. Then when we will reach the auto-generated code that we will see. Uh, then we will say, okay, it's better to initialize it in the constructor itself. <clears throat> okay. So now the list has a new list. Okay. Your pointer now is pointing to an actual list, 
So when you try to add a course to it, it will work and you won't have this problem anymore. Okay? So that's another type of exceptions. Okay. Any question? What if I, if I'm working with an array, for example, an array of integers, okay. Say this is five items. Of course, you don't need, when you specify the actual contents, you don't need to say what is the length. Okay. Okay. So I want to start like maybe examining what I have. So I say, okay, print array zero. Then at some point I say print array five. Okay, because I know, oh, okay, one, two, three, four, five, and I want to print the fifth number. Like I forgot that indexes, they start from zero. Okay, what, what happens now? Let's see. Okay, so once you reach this line, so what is the last index in this array? Four. Four, okay? Because we start from zero. Zero, one, two, three, four. I'm asking for the index number five. So I'm asking for something that doesn't exist, that's outside the array. So I will have an exception from another type called index out of range exception. So, we saw that we have so many different kinds of exceptions, okay? And whenever you have an exception, your program, the whole program and the whole execution will stop, okay? So what should I do to avoid, like, I can control what the user is going to enter, okay? Like here, maybe I can control it, okay? But if the user, is entering, for example, uh, this, the, the index, the user can enter anything. Like, even if you told the user, please enter a number between zero and four, users can still enter something that's wrong. Or you are telling the user, okay, enter two numbers, except zero, but they will still enter zero for you. So there should be a way for me to avoid exceptions and like most important, avoid stopping my whole program and crashing the whole thing, okay? And that's when they invented try catch. So try catch is a way to catch and handle exceptions. So let's first apply it on the division Example. Okay. So the code or the block that you think could generate an exception, you put it inside the try block. So just type try and write the, the block that you can that you think it's going to cause an exception okay and then you can say okay if i caught ex an exception like catch the exception 
Okay, like if if an exception happened. Okay, so if an exception happened, I don't want it to destroy my whole program. I want to catch it. And then I want like to do anything with it. So here, I want to show the user um, a message, for example, uh, something like, uh, your input is, or sorry, um, The operation is invalid. Okay, just some kind of general. I want some kind of a general uh, message because we will try to make it more specific soon. Okay, so so what I'm doing here, it, my code is still the same, but now I surrounded my code with try and catch. So inside the try, you write your usual code that you think may cause an exception. Okay, not not everything in your program. And inside the catch, you write the code that you need to happen. Okay, if an exception happened. And now the exception will be caught, and then it will be ignored. So it won't stop your program. Let's, let's see. Uh, of course, we need, we need to stop this one a little bit. Because this is another exception. So enter two numbers. Okay, I will enter seven and zero. And instead of crashing my whole program, it caught the exception, the, the catch block, and it showed this error instead of stopping my whole program. So it will tell you the operation is invalid. Okay, and that's how I catch any exception. Okay, now you may notice something else. First, is it, is it clear what did we do in the try catch? Okay, now you may notice something else that, okay, what if the user is like extremely stupid and he like instead the first number he entered Mike. So now you have another exception called format exception. Why? Because I am like, I assume that no one is stupid enough to enter a letter instead of uh, a number, but someone wrote the wrong thing. So now I have something called format exception. Format exception from its name, like I can't convert a word to a number. It's the wrong format, right? So so what, what types of exceptions we saw so far? Divide by zero exception, format exception, index out of range exception, and null reference exception, okay? So, so now I will notice, oh, even the first two lines, they can, they, they could make an exception. So I better take them inside what? I better take them inside the try. So now if an exception happened in this line or this line or this line, I will catch the exception and I will show this error message. Okay. Okay, let's try it out now. So I took all the lines that could result in an exception inside the try. So if someone tried to enter um, a word, like, like everything in the try will be aborted. So if, if an exception happened in this line, those lines won't continue. Like you will jump from this line, jump right away to the catch. But the good news is your whole program is still going on. Like only, only what's inside the try was aborted. And it jumped right away to the catch. 
because because there was an exception here okay but the rest of the program is still going on okay now you may ask okay um that's cool like inside the try if any error happened the try will be aborted and we will jump right away to the catch okay but you may say okay but this uh, like this statement is very generic like i don't know if the problem happened like as a user who doesn't have the code um, maybe he won't know is it the input that it's incorrect or the function is in, like well, like where or what is the exact exception that happened so that's why in the catch you can catch a specific exception so you can you can say catch format exception and let's call it e so if i code a format exception e i will do for example i will write the input is invalid and then you can write the exception message. So you notice that every exception has a message, right? So you can show the message to the user. Like you quote an exception from this type, format exception, and I called it E. E or exception or EX. It's a name. You, you call the exception that you quote, you called it E. So now I know if it's a format exception, I want to show this message. Now you can write another catch, okay? But this one you can say, okay, uh, this catch is for divide by zero exception. Another E. <clears throat> and here you can be more specific about the problem that you have and you can say can divide by zero okay and you don't need to show the for example the, the error message so so you have the exception okay you can do whatever you want with it so the exception has a message has inner exception has stack trace so you can use it or not that's fine but the thing is this catch will work only for divide by zero so like here inside the try there could be multiple types of exception that could happen okay so what we're saying okay when you catch an exception if it's from this type come here if it's a divide by zero, come here. Okay. Then at the end, we usually write a generic exception, a generic a generic catch. So this is for all the other kind, because the exception that could happen here could be from any type, right? Like you don't know, but you want to be very specific when it comes to format exception and divide by zero and then at the end you can say okay if i code any other kind so exception is like the father of all exception okay so any exception will go through this catch because this catch will co will catch any kind of exception <clears throat> so here you can write an um, like generic error message okay it's like this okay so when it comes to try you can write only one block of try but when it comes to catch, you can write multiple catches. Each catch is specialized in catching a certain type. That's if you want. Of course, you can only write this one, which will catch everything. 
okay? Like this one will catch everything because exception is the parent of all exceptions, okay? Like any other exception is a child from this one. Of course, child and parent is inheritance. We didn't study inheritance yet, but that's fine, okay? But like this error is extremely generic. So if you want to be good for your users, and if you want to show them exactly what was pro the problem, you can create specialized catches. So this catch is specialized in catching the divide by zero. This catch is specialized in catching only format exception. So each one of them like will make special handling for those certain types. Okay, now if you got something else, it will eventually come here. So you need to be careful that you need to write the very specific one before, then write the generic one at the end, okay? Otherwise, like the generic one will be caught first. Okay, so let, let's write out now. So if I wrote like something wrong, It will tell me the input is invalid and then the mess the exception message itself input string was not in a correct format. Okay. What if I try to divide by zero? So instead of this generic an error hand error happened or something. The user will know, oh, yeah, now I know, like as a user, now I know exactly what was the problem. It was can divide by zero. Instead of seeing some generic, oh, an error has occurred. Okay, which error? I don't know. Okay. Now, if anything happened other than the format exception or the divide by zero exception, it will come here. Okay. So uh, this is like almost the most common way of handling exceptions. Okay, any question what's going on here? So exceptions and caching them is something that we will do in almost every system. So you need to really to make sure that <coughs> you understand them like completely. Uh, Mohammed, yeah, I, I have a question, but not related to this catch, try and catch. But it just like, how did you do with the CW when you when you enter CW and how how did it make it to console the right? Uh, yep, write CW and um, click tab two times. Click tab two times. Oh, yep. Oh, oh, thank you. Okay, any, any other question? Okay, so the generic rule, the best, like the best code you can write is the code that handles exceptions, like first the specific types, okay, some specific types. Then at the end, you handle some kind of a generic type, okay, which is the exception. <clears throat> and the more like meaningful and specialized messages you show to the user, the more like the, the better your program will be. Now the users, they know exactly what is the problem rather than always seeing some kind of a generic issue. Like it's, it's really annoying when, for example, you are working in some kind of like a big system like Photoshop, for example, okay? And then just a message that, oh, something bad happened. We will close now. Okay. You have no idea what happened. You know, okay. you lost your work. You can't save. <clears throat> so exceptions are pretty annoying if they are not caught properly and handled properly. Okay. Mohammed. Yeah. 
Um, I noticed it doesn't like stop your program, but it does make it exit after. Can you make the catch like loop back to the try? Uh, you can, but it's extremely bad thing to do. Like you, like now you are not, um, like you, your your code and your statements are not sequential as they are supposed to be. Like you can use go to, which is extremely bad uh, coding style. So, you, like you need to think about a way to make your code continue. Like like how would you continue? Like. Here, imagine that this guy uh, entered like his name, okay? And there's an exception happened in this line. So when you will come back here, how, how would you divide? Like he, he entered the wrong thing in the first place. So if you want to, okay, keep trying until you enter the correct thing, for example, uh, you can do that in a loop. So in a while loop, like keep trying until the user um, like writes or enters the correct thing and there's no exception. Like you, you can put this in a loop. Yeah, that, that was kind of like my question. Yeah, but to make it like you can, you can tell it to, okay, go to this line or go to this line. But this is extremely dangerous, extremely bad. Like um, people may get fired if they wrote that because it works. But now it will make debugging, it will make understanding the code extremely hard. Okay. But if you want, you can use loops, you can use conditions, combination of them, and your code should stay sequential instead of go to and try. Yeah, but in this case, in this case, it's very bad idea to restrain the user because if the user can allow to do that it, the better option is uh block the the user the user to to insert uh, any wrong value uh, yeah but i didn't understand like what what is your point exactly like what should we do or okay i mean if you cannot divide by zero yes so if the user will be insert the number, it's better idea to block that the user put the zero in the second position. Instead of uh, use the try and catch to validate if the if the you mean last in the front end, is, like uh, like yeah. don't allow him in the front end. Yeah. Yeah. Well, of course you should like like for example when. The user is trying to to enter anything like you should do some validation but you also need to do validation in the back end like maybe the user will send a request right away and bypass the, the front end so you can't guarantee it so you need to to make like double validation yeah i i totally agree but uh, you you can't guarantee hundred percent that no one will send a zero. Okay, so like try catch is still required, like almost mandatory in this case. Okay, so. Now let's have a simple exercise. <laughs> okay, so I want you to go online and find the like one easy way, okay, or the common way. Uh, to write a string to a file in C sharp, a file on your hard disk. So, like you can open in your C drive or D drive or whatever drive you have, okay, and create a file here. Uh, 
this one has permissions. Okay, so try another drive if you have, okay? To write something to a file on your hard disk, okay? Let's find it and let's write a function that you send a word and a file to this function, a file path, like where is the file, and it will write this word to this file. Okay. okay. Let's find down. Uh, let's 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 search for it, and let's try to make it work. Okay. Write a string to a file in C sharp. Of course, this will require new libraries and uh, new namespaces. Okay, once you are done, please let me know.
في عدم I'm done. Okay. So let's see what what do you have? Uh, okay. Okay, Sagar, can you so show us? Uh, yeah, what sure. So I use string in that I wrote, hi, I am learning C-sharp. Mm -hmm. Then there is a library system.io.file.write dot dot write all text. And mm -hmm. then in the bracket, we have to give path. And uh, at the last, we have to pass string. OK. Yeah, well, that's good. But like it, it's the same code we want. But um, like this is not a function. Oh, so we have right. to write the function. Um, yeah. Okay. Like th that was the question. Okay. So let's let's convert this to a function okay. that takes a string and the back. Okay. Yeah. 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 While you do it, anyone made it a function? Yeah, but I use file dot write all. Okay, yeah, it, like there are many ways to to do it, but like um, let's see. Okay, so write file it takes a path, and it takes a word. Okay, and then write all text. So it's like, you will notice that C-sharp uh, has a very strong. Um, okay, just let me mute. Okay, so C-sharp has a very strong uh, library and very strong class called file. Okay, file is like, a, we will have a class on IO, like file is an extremely powerful one. So you can just call file dot write all text and then it will write. Okay, uh, can you, Try it out for us, Hans. Okay, is it working? So here Hans said, okay, I will send the path, path to the file. Okay. Like for here, for here, like it's in uh, Hans desktop. And he is sending a word. Okay. So like we, we can only see Visual Studio, I guess. Oh no, we can't see everything. Okay, so it's working. Okay, let's go back to your code. Okay. Can you write a wrong path, like new file uh, one, we call it, or, or, or the wrong thing, okay. Oh, this, oh, sorry, this, uh, oh, this uh, function, okay write the file for you if it's oh. if it's not there okay let's let's write let's write the, uh, like a hard disk that you don't have yeah. okay so like just by making any mistake to the path okay you will notice that now you have an exception which is directory not found exception okay so, but uh, Hans is using write all text. This one will create the file for you if it's not there already, I guess. Uh, I like, I don't know all the functions, but looks like that's it. But let's take a look at this one. It's telling you directory not found exception. Okay. And when working with files, it's very common to uh, 
uh, like have these issues. <clears throat> okay, so thank you very much, Hans. So now we want to uh, like learn something else when it comes to try and count. So let's write this function. Okay, this one takes string file or or let's say path and string the string that you want to write. Okay. So now like there are many ways to do it. I will use one called file stream. File stream is case null. Okay. Then I want to uh, instead of try, yeah, let's write it open. So one way to do it is first to open the file then try to write the contents. Okay, so uh, dot write, then so this one we need to convert it to a byte array, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's not not the important here. Okay. What I'm concerned of is to open the file. Okay. Okay. So this is my function. Okay. So I don't want to use like the strong write all text one. I want to use like what most languages have, which is first opening the file, then writing to a file. Now here you will notice that I need to convert it to a byte array and then uh, send uh, send the file. I'll try to do that, but that's not our main concern now. Okay, let's go now to, for example, here. Okay, and string path. So let's, let's create. Let's call it test. Let's just take the path. Okay. Oh, sorry, what I'm doing here. And then let's send it to a function. Path and the string. Okay. Stop those guys here. We don't end up writing them all the time. Okay. Oh. 
given as format is not supported. Well, it looks like a good bad. What's the problem here? Mm. Well, it didn't like the path for some reason, although it's correct, but maybe we should not add, add the at in the path. Uh, well, it's, it's fine. Yeah, well, maybe this one doesn't like the at, okay. But it should be the same, that's strange. This is the path, this is the string. Yeah, that's strange. I'm not really sure why it's, it's not liking the path here. Although it should be like, Okay, I'll look into that later, but that's not the issue now. Okay, my issue is with the open, with the open statement. So now you are trying to open a, a file, okay? You are trying to open a file for writing. Now, the problem is, imagine that you opened the file, so you opened a string to the file, okay? And you are trying to write or read or do anything Okay, and then an exception happens. Now, maybe you can write try catch and you can like avoid crashing your state, your, your, uh, your whole program. But the problem is an exception happened and you still have the file open. Okay, for example, imagine you are working with a database. You open the database and an exception happened, but the database is still what is still open. So that's that's the main issue is that sometimes when you have a problem in try, you need to do some cleaning up after you finish your try catch. Like whether whether an exception happened or not, there's there's some cleaning up that you need to do. Now, have you ever tried to open a file in or delete a file sometimes? Like sometimes when you want to delete a file in Windows, it will tell you, no, I can't delete the file because this file is open somewhere. Like it, it happens all the time because another program opened the file to do some work and that program was aborted, okay, or an exception happened, but the program, the, the connection to that file is still open. Okay, so one thing we can do is to try something called finally, which is now we will have try, catch, finally, and in finally always do any clean up that you have. So we can do something like this. So I will, I will try to do my work, okay? Like now it's not our IO course, so like, don't bother about this exact code, okay? Like, this code is just to, like, open a file. File. Uh, open a connection to a database, okay? Like, anything that requires re acquiring a resource, okay? Now, you acquired the resource, you are trying to open it, to work with it, okay? 
Now, the problem is, okay, I have the catch. Okay, this will catch any exception. Now, the problem, even if you code the exception, the resource that you opened or the resource that you acquired is still in use. So what should you do here to avoid like uh, acquiring this resource forever? Now, imagine you have this try catch in a loop. Like every time there is an exception happening and you opening a connection, open a connection. Eventually, the number of connections you can open to a database is limited. Okay, that's the problem. And if you opened all the connections to a database or to a file, no one else can open a, a new connection. Like you just opened like 40,000 connections. Like th this can happen in a few seconds. Okay. And now you just crash the whole database of the whole system. Like imagine crashing a database for a website where people buy and sell. Okay. And like you just crash the whole thing because you just maximized the number of connections allowed to you. Okay. So it's very important to release the resource that you acquired, whether you had an exception or you didn't. And that's the here, for example, show an error message, okay? Now, the thing that we care about is this new section. So finally, it's a section that's going to happen whether you had an exception or whether you didn't. And here you can say something like, close the file, close the connection to the database. Release the, release any resources, okay? So like we don't know databases, we don't know files yet. So I don't want to go into the details. Yeah, sorry for like bothering you with this one. But this is the like the most common example for like when you are doing division, there's nothing to clean, right? In final. Like the only um, like most of the time uh, when you want to clean and use finally is when you are acquiring a resource. Okay. <clears throat> so that's the job of finally. But be careful that finally will be executed whether there's ex uh, an exception or whether there isn't, okay? Like it's not only when there, there is an exception, okay? It will happen any anyway, okay? And you can use it to free the resources, to do some distractions for objects in memory that you don't want, some cleanup, any other thing. And now you are 100% sure that you will not exhaust the resources of the file or of the database or of anything, okay? And like it, you can also use it in any scenario, okay? But this is like the most common one. <clears throat> okay, so is it clear what is the job of finally? Okay, any, any question? Okay. <clears throat> so we'll take a um, quick break now, this 15 minutes break, and then we'll try to use exceptions in our code here, okay? And we will also try to write our own exception. Okay, yeah, see you in 15 minutes.
or maybe there will be an exception that will happen to it. Okay, so here I can say, okay, if if I could, uh, yeah, by the way, if you didn't say what is the type of the exception, okay, if you just say catch, it will catch everything. Okay, if you didn't specify any type, okay. So if you said catch, and then here, you know that join course returned an exception, okay? Something happened. So here you can, now you can show to the front end to the user, okay? Now uh, there is, for example, um, like, or, or you can catch the exception E itself. And since we are returning, okay? So one way is to, Console dot write line e dot message. Okay. So it's very similar. Do you remember the dictionary uh, when we were working with dictionaries? So take a look at a dictionary. So integer, integer. Okay. So once you say dictionary dot add. or um, dictionary dot, yeah, let's add, for example, okay, take a look at the add, okay, take a look at the, the, the message that appeared. Do you see, like, down there, they will tell you exceptions. Okay, this is uh, from the documentation. It will tell you that be careful that this add function may return argument null exception if you didn't send, like if you sent a null thing, and it may uh, it may result in argument exception, like if you send the same key again. So here, like you know that you need to be careful that the add could work, and if it didn't work there could be an exception that is returned from it, okay? And same thing goes for, uh, for our join course. Of course, we are not writing documentation yet, so you won't see it, but we will learn how to write documentation uh, very soon, okay? So the join course now, it needs to be some try inside try catch and now, if there is a problem happened, we will show this problem to the user. Okay, and of course you can show any additional messages, like here, show the original and any additional error message. Okay, like you can make a combination for them. Okay. So it's a very common thing to throw exceptions when there is an exception. Now, now if it's just like some kind of an error, okay, like if it's just some kind of like business error, like max credit allowed or something, it's better not to send or to throw exceptions in here. It's better, it's good to throw exceptions when there is like something that is really wrong. For example, uh, you are trying to join a course that doesn't exist. Okay, that's that's a good reason to throw an exception. But if you don't have the enough amount of credits, okay, this is not a very good reason to throw an exception. Like if you don't have enough amount of credits, it's better to just show like, an error like a regular one. Okay, like, okay, sorry, but you exceeded the amount of credits. But it's totally fine to throw an exception in this way and let the front end guys or the people who are calling your function handle, handle the exception. Okay? Mohammed, sorry, what would be the, um, so you just gave us an example. Can you give me like another example for the difference between business logic and what is just not existing and throw an exception? Like, 
like usually exceptions when something that you like you don't control more of most of the time like for example you can't connect to the database like you you are trying to go to the database to see if the course is there or not but it's it's not connecting like yeah the the connection to the database is not working okay like this is not a business logic thing uh, you are trying to add a code to join a course but someone another administrator in another room deleted this course like just a second ago and students are trying to enter it so like we don't have a business logic for this okay so most of the time it's better to use exceptions but like see here for example in the dictionary when you are adding a duplicate key they decided okay we want to throw an exception in this case because like for them this is extremely like extremely uh, something like totally bad like you need to avoid it at all costs so they want to like warn you in the worst ways that there is an exception happening okay so it's it's a matter of choice okay and you can discuss with your team when you are building your system that do you think we should return an error or a boolean true or false or an exception okay you have all the ways but like do you remember when we said all the courses should be in institute did we get it institute oh i didn't okay do you remember like you created something called institute right okay so the first thing you need to make sure that the course is in the institute list which is actually like a month from now we will use a database okay or less than a month actually so you need to make sure that the institute uh, or the course is in the database in the first place or like the student who is trying to for example imagine you are student you are trying to join courses maybe we disabled your account so if your account is disabled is deleted is any reason that's also a good, a good reason to throw an exception when like you don't find the user you don't find the course you can't connect to the database okay some of those like big issues okay but it's fine even if you want to use it but uh, over usage of throwing exception everywhere that's good that, that could be like a problem okay uh, and like so many systems in the front end like anytime they have an exception they will just show this like uh, an error page that oh something error happened okay but you should also avoid those generic generic uh, like uh, generic errors like for example look at this one uh, this is a very terrible design why because you are just saying there's something wrong okay what 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 is this wrong thing okay there could be a million reasons you should throw very specific exceptions and handle them one by one okay like you should handle max credits allowed alone. You should handle that you already dropped out alone also. And maybe you should handle that the course is not found also, also uh, in another room. Now, let's imagine, for example, that we want to create the institute. Okay. So uh, this is a class institute. Okay, and the institute has, you know, a name. Uh, the institute has a list of courses. And the institute has a list of students. Oh, student. Okay, so that that's my institute. Okay, so of course this is like imagine th this is the database. Okay, like I I I have all my courses and all my students saved in the database, which is the institute. Okay, now I have to save everything in classes because uh, we don't know databases yet. Okay, so 
we need to check, for example, like before, like when, when you have a student, okay, like if the student, for example, so the student has a name, nationality, birth date, okay, and the student also has the institute, like what, what institute the student in, okay? So for example, public institute, okay? So what, what student, uh, what institute this student is in, okay? And the course also, the course also has something similar, which is <coughs> public institute, Okay, so like what is the institute this course is in? Okay, so when I create a student, I need to like assign this student to an institute. So for example here, uh, okay, I created a student, I created a course before of the, before all, both of those, I need to say institute, let's call it MITT equals new institute, okay? And MITT dot course, or let's add it later, MITT. Now, all of this work is not necessary in the future because we will have databases, but we need to do it now. So I need to add this course to the institute, right? Uh, STD. Okay. And also, I want to add like the student dot institute. Okay. <coughs> uh, equals. Okay, so it goes both ways. Okay. Anyways, okay. Now, like the, the whole purpose of this thing, what I'm doing here now is when I try to join a course, like the first thing I need to know or I need to do is to check if like uh, this course so to join, first like this course to, to join, I, I need to check for nuts, but Let's, let's say that, uh, or sorry, I'm in a student now. So if this, like this student dot institute, okay, dot courses, like I need to make sure that the student is joining a course that's in the list of courses in the institute, right? Dot contains, okay, what? this course you are trying to join. Otherwise you are trying to join a course that's not in, in your institute, okay? Now you may say, how is this possible? Let's assume that it's possible, okay? So if not, okay. So if you are trying to join, okay, a course that's not in your institute for some reason, okay? Let's imagine we have a website for all students in Manitoba, okay? and for all institutes in Manitoba. And some like very big administrator has control over the whole thing. Okay, let's just imagine that. Just because we don't have a database yet. Okay. So if you are trying to join a course that's not in your institute list of courses, here I should throw an exception. Okay, now what is the best type of exception to throw here? Is it a divide by zero or um, 
null reference exception of So you will notice that none of the none of the uh, exceptions actually is suitable for me. Okay, like I like most of them. Like and I don't want to retain that generic one. Okay, that generic exception one. I want like a specialized exception just for my system, and that's when you can create your own exception. Okay, so. To create your own exception, of course, we can still use the same file. Okay, let's have it in the same file. <laughs> of course, like, uh, you know, like uh, now we are doing everything in the same file, but the preferred way is to create a file for each class. So just right click on your project, okay, add, and you will see class at the end. So then you can create a file for each class, okay, rather than having everything within one file. I'm doing this just so it can be easier to send the code for you. Otherwise, I will need to send like multiple files. Okay. So you can create a class for your own exception. So let's co call it course not found exception. Okay, how do I make this an exception? Like it looks like a regular class, okay? So to make it an exception, you need to make it a child of the, do you remember when we said the class exception is the parent of all exceptions? So if you made this a child just by using colon and make it inherit from exception, that's how you say, okay, this is an exception class now. Okay. So, we will study inheritance very soon, okay? And we will talk about inheritance in detail. But uh, one way to do it is uh, like, like th this is the only way to do inheritance, okay? But I don't want to go into details what, wh what is inheritance, how it works, okay? But now I made this new class called not found exception, which looked like any regular class, I made it a son of, or a child, okay? Just a child, let's say, sorry, we, okay? Of exception, okay? And this is like the way in C Java. In, in Java, they use uh, the word extend, okay? Instead of the current. In C Java, they said, okay, let's make it easier and just use uh, the current, okay? So, now this is enough for you to like uh, have an exception uh, class, but you can also uh, override the, the constructors. <coughs> like we can, like I don't want to go into much detail about what what we are doing here, but you can write constructors, and you can write another constructor that takes a message. Okay, and this one we call the constructor of the parent. Okay, now when it's time for for our inheritance class, we'll explain this in detail. Like what's going on, what is the base keyword? What does that mean? Okay, what are the conditions and the rules? It's a pretty like uh, a big topic. Okay, so we don't want to explain inheritance now. All what we need to know, if you want to make an exception, just create a class and, and let it inherit from the parent of all exceptions, which called exception. Okay, this is the parent of all exceptions. Any exception we see, divide by zero, not reference, eventually it inherited from this class. Let's, for example, go to divide by zero or, or format exception. Okay, so go to definition. So format exception is inheriting from something called system exception. Okay, system exception is inheriting from exception. So eventually, like, it's like a grandchild for it. 
Okay, so we will explain this in much detail, but eventually come to they all should come to this point here. Okay, like eventually, like you can inherit from a son or a child of exception, and you can be like one of the grandchildren. But let's leave that to the inheritance plan. Okay, now what can I do now? Now, for example, when I try to join a course, if this course is not here, it's not in my database, it's not in my list, I can throw new. And you will notice that now course not found exception is showing up and you can throw it, okay? And you can send a message like, the course can't be found. Okay. So now the, the caller of this function, now they know that we have a specific exception for this case. Now they don't want to handle all the exceptions in the world like, like this one. Now they can do another catch, okay? But this time they will catch what they can make a specific handling for this new exception that we just created. Okay, and now like uh, special handling for course not found exception. Okay, instead of the general Gen the generic handling for everyone. Now you can handle it like, now for example, imagine like this page, now you can uh, suggest the student, like do you want to call the administrator? Do you want, like if this an administrator, it may redirect you to the create course page. Like this course is not in our system, right? So maybe if we caught this exception, I will send you to the create new course page to make it easier for you to create the accept to create the course right away. Maybe I will, for example, send an email to the like the dean. Like when we have an exception from this time, maybe it's very critical thing that we need to send an email. Maybe we need to do some special handling. Okay. You can't you can do all types of handling inside a generic exception thing, right? So for each case, for each exception, maybe you have a set of like, like uh, uh, steps that you need to do when you have this one. Like here, for example, redirect to uh, create new course page. Okay, or uh, for example, you can say, uh, email, why is not, email the administration. Okay. Like any, any other handle. Imagine someone is trying to access the information of students while this guy or this person doesn't have enough permission. So what do you want to do in this case? It's not enough to tell this person, oh, you don't have enough permission. Maybe you need to send a notification to the security administrator. Like someone is trying to access the information of students, okay? And it happened this time and the account was this guy, okay? So you need very specific handling for like those security things. So you can, for example, create your own exception that's called permission is not enough or not sufficient permission exception, okay? So handling exceptions like in specific tiles is extremely important and we should always leave the generic handling to the end. Like if everything failed, then okay, let's show you the general error message. Like something happened, we don't know, okay? But we shouldn't show this right away. <clears throat> okay. 
So finally, it's not mandatory. No, finally, it's not mandatory. Okay. Try catch are mandatory. Like you can't have try, uh, you can't have try without catch or catch without try. But finally, like maybe finally here, um, for example, if we are talking about web, like delete the session of, um, or log him out, maybe. Or, or do something like it depends on, for example, if someone is trying to access some secret data, maybe you need to lock his account. Okay. Uh, like maybe if someone is writing the wrong password, usually they lock the account after like five times. Okay. So maybe you need to do something. Uh, otherwise, finally is not mandatory. Okay. So here I threw the exception myself. Okay. And then the caller of my code, which is most likely the front end are okay handling it and they are doing what they are supposed to do. Like, me as a backend developer, I don't know what you want to do. Like, uh, I will tell you that the, an error happened. So another layer above me, another the, another layer above the back end, they should take care of, uh, like notifying the administrators, calling the security. Okay, this layer of the back end, the the layer that talks to the database, should only take care of talking to the database and saving and deleting. It shouldn't like do all the work, okay? We will talk about that when uh, we design like our layers, but you may say, okay, why don't you just send, like do all of this in the back end and like without any exceptions and everything. This is a very bad design. Like our functions shouldn't do all the work right away. Any question? Okay, so three main rules when it comes to the like the clean code when it comes to exceptions. Okay, so now everything as usual, everything will work, but do you want the clean code or do you want just a spaghetti code that's like a mess? So three main rules. Uh, let me just writing, uh, let me just write them to you. Okay. So. So first one, catch exceptions starting from specific types. Eventually use the most general or the generic type. Okay, this one is like clear. Now, return exceptions, okay, for exceptional or outside reason like Database is not reachable. File is not in the system. Uh, the course is not in my, my database, okay? Otherwise, it's better to retain a message or like true or false. Okay, that's the rule number two. The, no, the rule number three, okay? Don't use, which is extremely important, don't use exceptions to control the flow of your code. What does that mean? Let's imagine that, for example, I am doing, like I want to do a calculator or something, or uh, let's say about courses and students. So I will say, okay, I will try to join the course. If an exception happened, I will um, drop the course or, or do something else with courses. Or, this is extremely bad. Why? Because you are depending on exceptions 
to control the flow of your code. For example, like here, let's think about a good example. Like I will try to join a course. If I failed, then for example, I will um, like um, the, the, what what can you do? Uh, leave the course, join the course. Like I, I really can't think about any logical operation to do when you fail to join a course. Yeah, okay, let's talk about waiting list. So imagine, for example, I will try to join a course. If I failed, I will, if I failed with an exception, I will join the waiting list of a course. Okay, it's, so it's like I am allowing exceptions to control what's going on, what's going to happen with my program. So exceptions should only be code. Okay, I'll catch them, show the message, the error message to the user, and that's it, and then close whatever. You shouldn't take a decision based on exception. Like if an exception happened, okay, let's go and uh, order a transcript or do something else or leave a course or join a course or, okay? Don't rely on exceptions to control the flow of your program. Exceptions, just catch them, decide what you want, like uh, log the error, uh, contact the administration, okay, that's it. Don't do another operation based on them, okay? That's like extremely important and so many people, they don't follow this rule. They will tell you, okay, uh, like based on exceptions, they are controlling the flow and taking decisions. Um, they see that it works. Yeah, it works, but it's a nightmare for testing, for finding bugs, for like for everything, for maintainable maintainability. Okay, so those are the three main rules when we want to write like clean exception handling. Okay, now it's very easy if, like I, I can finish this class in 10 minutes. Okay, try and catch. And finally, that's what you read when you go online. But the main thing that you want to learn is how to write clean code, how to create good designs. Okay, this is what distinguish a person who only knows the syntax. Okay, a person who only knows the rules. Okay, this is integer, this is string. And a person who knows what he's doing. Okay, and that's why like for many of our students, you will notice that in two weeks, three weeks, they were offered a job that they will see that they do care about what they're writing. Like it's a very big problem with new graduates that they just work a code that works. Okay, like code works, that's nice. And they feel very happy that it's working. Yeah, but the more you add to your system, the bigger it gets that like it, Eventually, it will reach a point where it's not maintainable anymore. Like you can't, re like uh, you know those houses from um, cards, and like eventually, when it's too big, if you added like a single change, the whole thing will collapse. Th and this is the same story with with our code. If it's not clean, like if they ask you for any single change, you will notice that errors are everywhere now because your code wasn't clean enough, okay? So keep those rules in mind. <clears throat> those are like the three main golden rules when it comes to exception. Now, there are some interesting cases, like what if you are catching an exception, okay? Or let, let's even take about a worse scenario. See the finally? So the finally is supposed to close stuff and clean. What if there's an exception happened in the finally? Like finally, eventually it's code, right? Like finally it's code. So what if there's an exception happened in finally? Okay, that's like even a worse thing. So what happens actually is it will be treated like any other exception. It will also look for catches. It will also, and if no one catch or if no one caught this exception, it will crash the whole system, okay? Now, you will notice that um, 
there are many things inside the exception itself. So for example, this is E, like the exception E, we have so many uh, different stuff. The most important thing is the message, which is the message of the exception. Uh, but we also have something also extremely important, which is called the stack trace. So stack trace is very important for us as programmers. Okay, it's it's not very good for users. It will tell you exactly what was called until we reach the exception. So like the function main called the function join course, which called the function um, something else, and like it will show you the hierarchy. Uh, for what led to that exception, okay? And now this is extremely important when you want to debug stuff. Like for you, for example, this, like this line is making an exception. But for you, it's like totally correct. Like, okay, what's the problem? You will notice or you may notice that, oh, the, the function that called this one before, that was the issue. Like they sent you uh, a null course or a course that doesn't exist or something, okay? So you may notice that the, the, the fix of the error is most of the time is not in the line itself. It's somewhere else before. So how do you know before? It's with that stack trace. It will tell you exactly, it will trace the whole program until the exception point, okay? And you can use the stack trace here. Uh, there's something called inner exception. This is very important when we work with databases uh, because the database itself is a system, right? So the database will have or generate an exception itself and it will send it to the code, to like C-sharp, okay? So C-sharp won't throw the exception of the database away. It will store it inside something it called inner exception. So inner exception is the exception that happened in another system most of the time, okay? Because C-sharp has its own exceptions, right? And most of the time, C-sharp will just throw something general to you. Uh, C-sharp has something called database exception, okay? Which could be anything, okay? Like it, there are literally a million, million reasons why a database would throw an exception. So that so uh, C sharp can't like handle all database exceptions and create classes for them. So in C sharp they say, okay, we will store the exception that was thrown from the database. We will store it here for you, and you take a look and you deal with it. Okay. So the exception that is thrown in another system is usually stored here in that exception. Okay, so uh, you will find them here, like message, stack trace, inner exception. Uh, you have lots of other stuff, but those are like the most common ones that you um, may need most of the time. Okay, like anytime you work with databases, you need to go to the inner exception and see what was what was the issue in the database side. Okay. <sighs> That was a lot of words. Okay. Okay, any question about exceptions in general? Uh, so we saw exceptions in general. We saw try catch, try catch finally. Uh, we saw how to create a, an exception from our own. So we can handle it. Uh, we saw the general rules of handling exceptions, okay? Different types, okay? So that was like everything we need to know regarding our exception handling, okay? Um, we can take after the break, this hour we can just take it a break before the lab, okay? And of course, if you have any questions, you can still message me anytime. Okay, but when it comes to exception, uh, exceptions, that's our time. Okay. Yeah. So I will send you uh, the whole code. Please uh, try to review it. Uh, once you understand the uh, the concept, 
try catch finally okay uh, when to throw exception instead of returning a boolean or instead of just an error message okay don't use exceptions to control the flow of your code make exceptions just for catching maybe registering what happened and that's it okay if you understood those things then that's everything we need to know for now okay uh, there will be a time when we learn more about exceptions and like some um, like more specific details but for now that's more than enough Okay, any question? Okay, so I'll let you review the code, see if you have any issues with it, okay? And whenever you have a question, just, whenever you have a question or an exception, okay, just let me know. Okay, so after the break, 12.30, uh, let's take this hour just to, relax a little bit and then we will have the lab okay unless if you want i can tell zach to uh, try to um, make it right away i don't know what do you prefer <clears throat> but i also don't know if he's available uh, okay okay let's leave it as as is okay yeah try to have like a lengthy breakfast like two hours breakfast or two hours lunch okay yeah see you tomorrow guys Bye.